Right, the model we have here is uh, XMM Newton. It's uh, an X-ray multi-mirror, that's what XMM stands for, and Newton, we like to name our spacecraft after people or things that we like, and Newton, for a physicist, is just about the greatest physicist there ever was. He's um, up there somewhere beyond Einstein. And so we have this great observatory. It's one of the great observatories of the world. It's designed to look at X-rays. You can't detect cosmic X-rays on the surface of the Earth. You have to go out into space to see them. It's like taking the fingerprints of the objects we're looking at out in space. In fact, there's a part of physics called spectroscopy which is fingerprinting things. It tells you what things are made of. It tells you how the temperature of things. And this is exactly that. It's a machine designed not to look at cool objects like the Earth, like other planets. It's to look at very, very hot objects. So you're looking at the regions around black holes where matter is being crushed. And at the same time, although it's destruction we're looking at with things like XMM Newton, because in destruction you get big explosions, you get lots of light, you get lots of x-rays. Uh, at the same time you're seeing the creation of things because in those intense energies you start making the elements, the complicated elements, the heavy elements that uh, are actually, even down here on Earth, very essential to life. XMM Newton today every day is rotating around the Earth. Uh, it goes very far from Earth. It goes, it's in what's called a highly eccentric orbit. And so uh, when it's doing its key observations, it's very far from Earth, which takes it away from the radiation belts of Earth and all the detritus associated with the Earth, uh, almost as far as, well, a third the distance to the Moon. Uh, so it's 100,000 kilometers away when it's farthest away and then uh, half a day later, it's almost skimming the treetops. On the, it's like being on a, uh, a funfair ride, you know, it's, it's going up and then slowly very far away from the Earth and then comes zooming back down and then slowly climbing up again. It's, um, uh, and it's been doing that for 11 years now and it'll go on doing that. Space pervades our modern world. Sure, I'm looking outwards with science and exploration. I'm looking out into the universe. But at the same time, I'm bringing knowledge back to Earth. But if, I, if we turn the things we look out into space around and look down on the Earth, there's a lot to be done on Earth with space information. And in fact, you use it all the time. I mean, Google Earth. Where did the images come from? You look at an Earth-based space image very, very frequently now. When you navigate your car to get someplace, you're using space. You don't know when you make a telephone call to the United States, whether it goes via space or by a transatlantic cable. Space is there in everyday life. And in a modern society, in a high-tech society, you ignore space at your peril. At the same time, space is the final frontier. I mean, beyond space is nowhere. You go off the Earth and you find this enormous universe, and here we are back on this little planet, and really the information we get from our spacecraft is telling us how we ended up here from somehow out there. All the atoms in your body, all the, they were made originally in space. I've got probably at the moment about 15, 16 spacecraft in operation. Then you say, well, what are the spacecraft doing? Some of them are looking out to distant objects, to exotic things going on beyond our solar system. That's exactly what XMM Newton does. But others, we've got one called Mars Express, and another called Venus Express. Can I ask you to guess where they are? They're in orbit around Mars and Venus, looking at our neighborhood, looking at 
really the two planets that are the closest relatives of the Earth. And really, we only have one Earth, but it does have brothers and sisters. And if you think the Earth is in trouble, take a look at the brothers and sisters. Beyond the solar system, I'm afraid we can't get there yet, even with robots. We are planning missions to look even further out into, uh, into the universe beyond our galaxy. In fact, back to the beginning of time with the Planck spacecraft that we launched last year. We are, however, going into something really new which is the exploration of Mars in a systematic way with our American colleagues. And the future exploration of Mars is going to be jointly between the Americans and Europe. And there we'll be sending several missions to more Mars. And that's, um, if you like, something completely new.